Hey guys, today I will be reading the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita as it is, um, observing the armies on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And if you haven't seen it yet, you can go and watch my introduction where I read the whole introduction to this book by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So if you want the, whole, the full introduction, then you can go and watch that. But I'll just give a brief preamble to what we're going to find in this opening chapter. The Bhagavad Gita is a small part of the larger work, the epic, the Mahabharata. And we find... Um, uh, the, the two main characters of the book are Lord Sri Krishna, God incarnated, and Arjuna. And Arjuna is about to go to war. And on the opposing side of the war are his, uh, you know, his teachers, his brothers, his cousins, his grandfathers. And he becomes distraught that he doesn't want to fight the battle and, and kill all these individuals. And the Bhagavad Gita is Krishna advising him how to live a, a meaningful life and a life of purpose and there's some commentators that would say that the the Bhagavad Gita is a sort of allegory for our own spiritual fight like the Muslims would have jihad uh, they would say that the Bhagavad Gita is a war that we have to wage in our own lives to live a spiritual life to live a life where we remember um, God and the you know, the, the attitude of devotional service, and that's particularly prevalent in Bhagavad Gita as it is. And so, yeah, shouldn't take very long, chapter one, and I'm going to move on and read all of the chapters in turn, and then you'll have a full playlist of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. So, observing the armies on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Tritarasta said, O Sanjaya, after assembling in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do, being desirous to fight? Sanjaya said, O king, after looking over the army gathered by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhana went to his teacher and began to speak the following words. O oh, my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupada. Here in this army there are many heroic bowmen equal in fighting to Bhima and Arjuna. There are also great fighters like Yudhana, Virata and Drupada. There are also great heroic powerful fighters like Dristaketu, Chekitana, Kasiraj, Purujit, Kuntiboj and Shaibya. There are the mighty Yadumanu, the very powerful Uttamaja, the son of Subhadra, and the sons of Draupadi. All these warriors are great chariot fighters. O oh, best of the Brahmanas, for your information, let me tell you about the captains who are specially qualified to lead my military force. There are personalities like yourself, Bhishma, Kana, Kripa, Ashvatama, Vikana and the sons of Samadatta and Burishrava, who are always victorious in battle. There are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. All of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons and all are experienced in military science. Our strength is immeasurable and we are perfectly protected by Grandfather Bhishma, whereas the strength of the Pandavas, carefully protected by Bhima, is limited. Now all of you must give full support to Grandfather Bhishma standing at your respective strategic points in the phalanx of the army. Then Bhishma, the great valiant grandsire of the Kuru dynasty, the grandfather of the fighters, blew his conch shell very loudly like the sound of a lion giving Duryodhan great joy. After that, the conch shells, bugles, trumpets, drums and horns were all suddenly sounded and the combined sound was tumultuous. On the other side, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna, stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses, sounded their transcendental conch shells. Then Lord Sri Krishna blew his conch shell, called Panchanjanya. Arjuna blew his, the Devadatta, and Bhima, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his terrific conch shell called Pundra. King Yudhisthir, the son of Kunti, blew his conch shell, the Ananta Vijaya, and the Kula and Shahadeva blew the Shogosha and Mani Pushpaka. That great archer, the king of Kashi, the great fighter Shikandi, Drishta Jumna, 
Virata and the con unconquerable Satyaki, Drupada, the sons of Drupada, and the others, O king, such as the son of Subhadra, greatly armed, all blew their respective conch shells. The blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious, and thus, by vibrating both in the sky and on the earth, it shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. O king, at that time Arjuna, the son of Pandu, who was seated in his chariot, his flag marked with Hanuman, took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows, looking at the sons of Dhritarashtra. O king, then Arjuna spoke to Krishna these words. Arjuna said, O infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies so that I may see who is present here, who is desirous of fighting, and with whom I must contend in this great battle attempt. Let me see those who have come here to fight, wishing to please the evil-minded son of Dhritarashtra. Sanjaya said, O descendant of Bharata, being thus addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties. In the presence of Bhishma, Drona, and all the other chieftains of the world, the Lord Krishna said, Just behold, Partha, all the Kurus who are assembled here. There Arjuna could see within the midst of the armies of both parties his fathers, grandfathers, teachers, maternal uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, and also his fathers-in-law and well-wishers, all present there. Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth drying up. My whole body is trembling and my hair is standing on end. My bow Gandiva is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning. I am now unable to stand here any longer. I am forgetting myself and my mind is reeling. I foresee only evil, O killer of the Keshi demon. I do not see how any good can come from killing my own kinsmen in this battle, nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom or happiness. O Govinda, of what avail to us our kingdoms, happiness, or even life itself, when all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed in this battlefield? O Madhusudana, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandsons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, brothers-in-law, and all relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties and are standing before me, then why should I wish to kill them, though I may survive? O maintainer of all creatures, I am not prepared to fight with them, even in exchange for the three worlds, let alone this earth. Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. What should we gain, O Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune? And how could we be happy by killing our own kinsmen? O Janardana, Although these men, overtaken by greed, see no fault in killing one's family or quarrelling with friends, why should we, with knowledge of the sin, engage in these acts? With the destruction of dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished, and thus the rest of the family becomes involved in irreligious practice. When irreligion is prominent in the family, O Krishna, the women of the family become corrupt, and from the degradation of womanhood, O descendant of Rishni, comes unwanted progeny. When there is increase of unwanted population, a hellish situation is created, both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. In such corrupt families, there is no offering of oblations of food and water to the ancestors. Due to the evil deeds of the destroyers of family tradition, all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated. O Krishna, maintainer of the people, I have heard by disciplic succession that those who destroy family tradition dwell always in hell. Alas, how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts, driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness. I would consider it better for the sons of Dhritarashtra to kill me unarmed and unresisting rather than fight with them. Sanjaya said, Arjuna, having thus spoken on the battlefield, cast aside his bow and arrows and sat down on the chariot, his mind overwhelmed by grief. And so if you are interested in hearing more about any of those passages, like I've mentioned before, I believe, in this Bhagavad Gita, as it is my favorite edition of Bhagavad Gita, each of the 
translations has a lengthy commentary by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swabhupada, Prabhupada. And so if you're interested in learning more, just let me know in the comments and I'll maybe do a separate video on that if it requires one or maybe just answer in the comments. But each passage has a lengthy commentary to deepen your understanding and your wisdom and your bhakti. So that's very important. And if you want to discuss even more further and more fully, be sure to check out my book club community over at Patreon where we can discuss all these ideas very deeply. And yeah, hit like, subscribe and share the video if you found it beneficial. And I'll be back soon with the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita as it is the contents of the Gita summarized. Okay guys, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon.